Good afternoon there, ladies and giblets. Now, I did promise you, didn't I, at some point, that uh, I would show you what I consider to be, without doubt, the most bonkers guitar that Gibson has ever released. <laughs> and here, I feel like I'm playing a giant mouse pointer or, some, or a shovel of some sort. Uh, anyway, yes, so... Before I get into the story about it, let us have a listen what it sounds like, and then we'll go through all the specs and blah de blah. Okay, let's crack on. Okay, so here's the pickups. Oh, and I'll tell you something about these in a mo. So we're starting with the. My God, this guitar's so big it's hard to get it in the frame. Okie dokie. So uh, starting with the bridge end, and just the usual kind of stuff. The epitome of Gibson sounds. Okay, into the center. There's, you know, there's just nothing else that sounds like a Gibson, is there? Okie dokie. Uh, uh, sorry, so that was the center, and now finally onto the neck end. Okay, that'll do is that though I'm in love with the pickups. I'm gonna tell you all about the pickups right now. So let's hope that that gave you some idea about what it sounds like. I mean, almost like any other Gibson-ish, but it does have a few special features. So as we know, the original Flying V was originally introduced, I used the word original twice there, repetition, uh, in 1957. 
and these were made as a, a, I mean, God bless Gibson, they always do some kind of either special week or special month or, you know, somebody's birthday, the company's whatever it is, birthday or s some kind of celebration, which I think is absolute genius by their marketing division. And, uh, and it does inspire them, certainly, uh, to come up with new and weird stuff from time to time, certainly. So, 2007, they released as Guitar of the Week the Reverse Flying V, and uh, they made 400 of them, and they went out the door, again, they went to, you know, the, their most precious uh, dealers, and uh, they went out the door in seconds. So, they re-released it a few months later. Now, the original 2007 one was done only in trans amber and it had a rosewood fretboard and regular uh, chrome or nickel hardware and they, as I say, yes, so they made 400 of those and then a few months later they did a further run and they made 300 black ones, 300 white ones and 300 natural ones and they changed a few of the specs and the difference was this. Uh, on the original one you got a rosewood fretboard, on the uh, few months later ones you got an ebony fretboard which is lovely. I do like ebony fretboards, they, they don't feel any different, they just look cool and that's all. Um, they also gave them gold hardware and um, what was the other difference? Oh, and the pickups. The pickups are hand wound 57 classics. And goodness, don't they sound marvellous. I'm so, so, so impressed with the way this guitar sounds. So, yeah, 1957, 2007, 1957 the original Flying V, 2007 the reverse Flying V. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and they bung this, uh, well, it's a future headstock, isn't it? We don't see those too often. So you've got so you've got a total production run of reverse flying Vs of 1,300. There are not many in the world. There's one on eBay right now in uh, natural, whether it's the original release or the second release, I don't know. So it's either the Trans Amber or the natural. Uh, that was released a few months later and the guy wants £2,250 for it and I think it's worth every penny because scarcity value that's I mean really these won't hang on a wall in the Hard Rock Cafe don't they you know what I mean because they are very probably the most impractical uh, guitar that Gibson's ever made why are they impractical what do I like about a V what I like about a V, as I always bang on about, is the way that the shoulders fall away and you can get right up here to fret 22 with ease. With this, you're stuck at about fret 20 in the real world. You, well, you can, you can, with a bit of contortion, get yourself up here to 22. But I've not played it enough to uh, achieve that particular objective. Uh, so, you know, uh, all mahogany body, um, mahogany neck, and really, really, really nice gold hardware. You're always going to get a bit of tarnishing here, aren't you? And here, usually, that, because that's where your hand goes. And as we know, uh, sweat will destroy a metal finish quicker than probably almost anything else. Uh, so always, so if you've got a guitar that you're precious about, every time after you've played it, give it a jolly good wipe down. Make sure you get all your DNA off it, otherwise it'll, uh, it, it will um, make your hardware tarnish. Uh, so yes, so we've got an um, ebony fretboard. The, the, pick, the pickups are very likely the best I've ever heard. And although they've got that very typical, what you just heard, although they've got that very, very typical, thick, creamy, Gibson Bell-like tone, um, 
th these have just got these have just got a, a bit of extra wizardry going on inside. And wow, fifty-seven classics, good lord above! And and the, and they were not they were not cheap. They were not cheap, but they sold out in a trice. And uh, Gibson never done it again, which makes sense because because then because I'll be honest, they are not the only. Be I do like to play up here. I use every fret on the fretboard, and it get, and this is this just stops you. Oh, I shouldn't do that really. Uh, anyway, this just stops you uh, getting there. Yeah, they also changed on the original. It had a a, a plastic uh, bell truss rod cover, and on this, of course, it's gold. And it probably say something. Does it say anything on it? Can you see? I can't see. I don't think it does say anything on it. Anyway, so they replaced that with uh, the gold uh, finish one, and uh, you don't. You don't get a tone control, you don't even get a volume control for each pickup. All you get is a single volume control and a pickup selector switch. That's it. For me, that's absolutely fine because, as you've heard me say before, I just use everything on 11 all the time anyway. So that is that, yes, and you've got, uh, I think that they are proper mother of pearl dot inlays. I would imagine on a guitar that came in at this kind of price range it's the least that they could do. So yeah, gold hardware, that'll be either Cluson or Gibson Deluxe. Oh can you see? You might be able to see. I don't know if they numbered them differently either. Fancy that, I've not even, I've not properly researched this thing. But uh, what a but what a jo what a joyful thing what a joyful thing to have, and of course it would usefully I think double up as a spade you know if you were doing a bit of gardening or something like that. So uh, there it is, the most bonkers Gibson I've ever 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 seen, and who plays one? Well, mm, who plays reverse flying V? I'll tell you who plays Reverse Flying V. Nobody. Or nobody of any note or nobody that I can find anyway. Now, what is interesting is this. <sighs> do you remember Judas Priest? Hmm. Of course you do. Uh, in 1980, they released a single called Breaking the Law terrific uh, video uh, about uh, some young guy who had uh, been made redundant or perhaps he was furloughed and uh, decided to uh, go into a bank and steal the most prized possession in there which of course was Judas Priest's gold uh, album. Now don't forget this is 27 years before this was made or conceived even and in that movie, if you fast forward through to the security guard, who seems to be more interested in just watching what's happening on the CCTV than actually doing anything, he goes in to a guitar case and pulls out... Yes, he do. well, it's only a cardboard one, you know, a bit of a mock-up, of a reverse flame V. I wonder if Gibson... Got the idea from there. Uh, so, there's an interesting bit of history for you. So, thank you all so much for tuning in and I'm going to look at Gibson's weirdest, certainly in my opinion, Gibson's weirdest guitar ever. But, oh my word, doesn't it sound good? And really, I'm amazed that, uh, well, 2007, the glam rock scene had long gone. It was 30 years past. But if this had been available, I reckon, in the 70s, there are some thousands upon thousands of them. But as it stands, total production run with the initial series and the uh, second release, 1,300 produced. So there's only, th there's only 300 of these black ones in the world. Wow. Right, okay. What a lucky boy I am, getting older on these. Blimey O'Reilly. So, uh, right, uh, that's it from me. I should be back tomorrow 
with um, a budget Les Paul, which I want to show you. And I have been inundated with literally and literally an email uh, about should I buy, should I not kind of thing. So we'll have a discuss whether you should buy or should not. And uh, so that's it until tomorrow. So, adios amigos. Thanks ever so much for tuning in. And ta -ra.